In the ancient era of the early 2000s, there was a special kind of video game, the movie tie-in. When a movie came out, the studio making it would find some coins in the couch cushions and pay four dudes to make a video game playable on the GBA, GameCube, DS, PS2, Xbox, PSP, Xbox 360, Wii, and Java? They made a Cars game for Java? Disney did that for Lightning McQueen, but they didn't do it for Lightning McMahon's new movie, Thor Love and Thunder. Turns out it's more lucrative to get paid by Fortnite for likeness rights than it is to make a new game. So if they're not gonna do it, I'll do it myself. I'm on a quest to find the most fun build in Elden Ring, and this week I took a crack at the God of Thunder, Thor Odinson. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch, but if you want to support me with money, do that on Patreon, please. There's a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons stuff over there if you're into that. Now, let's go get hammered. Starting off in character creation, we need a big jawline, facial hair that's brown, and top hair that's blonde. And I made him happy. I like seeing Thor happy, he's been through a lot. We're starting as a hero, they have the most strength, and hammers are heavy. Unlike me, I'm light enough to jump off a cliff and fly away. Or fall to my death. Down to Midgard, the lands between Limgrave, whatever you want to call it. Say hi to Moon Knight, we'll build you in a few weeks, accidentally piss off the tree sentinel, rest at the grace, and buy a crafting kit. We'll need it for a simple recipe later, I'm thinking some Norwegian pickles. At the gate front grace, our sister stops by, not Hela, she'll come later, it's Loki. She's here to give us a horse. Lord knows Loki loves horses. Go ahead and Google Loki loves horses on your work computer. Then grab the web blade, which we can use later to change the Ash of War on our weapon. Strangely enough, we need to get Stormbreaker before Mjolnir. It's not actually locked behind any bosses, other than this Knight's Cavalry, since we can just skip it and make our way to the Great Axe Caravan. I don't know why two giants, a mounted mercenary, and roughly 12 foot soldiers are transporting a big axe, but I want it. Even though it requires 30 strength to wield, and I currently have 16. Remember, heroes have the highest strength, and we're still barely halfway there. Korg fell in a big hole. I'll get him out. Not because I want to fight him to the death later, I just want to help. It's what heroes do. Charon wandered out of Greek myth mythology and is sailing around my Norse game. I'll just hit him until he goes back to Hades. Great game, by the way. I should play that too. He's on the way to the Grail Dragon Warp, a pretty standard start for any run, but we get warped to Avengers HQ by Loki before we can trade in Karen's bones for a seal from this guy? I don't know who he is, like Hank McCoy? On the way out, I bonk the Black Blade Kindred because it's funny, and he kills me because he's an endgame level boss and I haven't leveled up yet. No sense of humor from this one. We're gonna go do some grave robbing. There's a bunch of golden runes in this little cemetery. Then we can dip into Fort Pharaoh for a golden rune 12 and Radagon Sword Seal. Of course, we also died to the rats twice, they're endgame rats, and endgame rat is actually what defeats Thanos when you think about it. I think we need to kill a boss to get our self-esteem back, and if there's anyone Thor beats up on for a quick ego boost, it's Loki. Not our sister Loki, an evil variant Loki calling himself Margit, but he uses a big staff, conjured weaponry, desperately wants his dad's approval, resents his lauded older brother, and isn't technically a god, but rather an adopted other race that's considered evil by the people in power despite being just, you know, other people. It's a little on the nose. We hit Loki on the nose with Fandral from the Warriors 3. Everyone cheer for the Warriors 3. Everyone cheer for the Warriors 3. Despite being roughly 25 levels lower than we usually are since we didn't kill the Sleepy Dragon, Loki is a first try victory. Ego boosted. He was gatekeeping Gostok, who's another gatekeeper, who tells us not to use the gate. Seems pretty on brand. What we crave is up the side of Stormvale anyway. First, we need the rusty key, which is locked in a room with a knight who wants us dead. Gostok locks us inside. Dude, we get it. You like locked doors. Don't make it your whole brand. After we battle our way out, we're able to get out and around for the big brick hammer. It's called the Brick Hammer. The hammer, literally called the hammer, is locked inside the royal capital and it's a little too small. The giant crusher is a little too big. The brick hammer is a baby bear hammer. It's just right. A bit shorter than I'm used to swinging, but it's tremendously thick. Hopefully that won't make it hard to find a romantic partner. Let's get some more experience swinging our hammer around. First, Nerd Juice. He's blocking the Murkwater Cave, and we can get some help from Hogan from the Warriors 3. Clap for the Warriors 3. 
Inside the Murkwater Cave, we can impress Patches with our big hammer until he gives us tasty pickles, and a recipe to make the pickles at home, which we're really gonna need. This build uses a lot of stats. Think about it. Our weapon requires 31 strength on its own. Every build needs vigor. We'll eventually get some armor, so we need endurance. We're gonna cast spells, so we need faith to reach the casting requirements, and mind to have the resources to actually cast spells. We need levels. Off to the Limgrave Tunnels for smithing stone ones, and boy howdy, was I whiffing in this cave? I kept thinking my hammer was just a few inches longer than it is. Ha ha ha, good double entendre. Hammer is code for wiener, but seriously? It just misses all the time because it's not quite long enough. Going down, I'm burning through my flasks and reach the boss with none left. Can I still win? Yeah, it's the stone digger troll. Just hit him in the tiny little knees. To hammer our hammer up to plus three, I hop over to the church of Ella, where Frigga comes by and gives me a bell. I'm calling Ronnie Frigga in this run. Don't worry, we're not going to marry her. That would be a key. Up to Lernia, we ride around Stormvale and battle the map keepers. Long enough to grab the map, at least. We don't need to kill them, but god, I hate these three losers. Nearby, we find a secret basement in the purified ruins, but not before smashing everyone on the way. Everyone wants a piece? Everybody gets a piece. There's a talisman inside that boosts faith by plus five, called the Two Fingers Heirloom. It can be hard to find in the purified ruins since the basement is blocked, so just remember, two fingers, try whole. Karen is back up the hill. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Go back to Hades. He isn't the real boss of the area. That's this random Lindell soldier. Why is he in Lernia? Don't know. Why is the lightning prayer book being held by a singular enemy in an out of the way location? Don't know. Why did I die three times? Because I'm not good at this game. Before we can take it to the Odin Dog, we have some more running to do. It's Lernia running time. Little update, there's three silver foul foots that boost item discovery. Great for farming if we need a farmed item later. Thankfully, we don't, but that just means we can use them to farm foul foots to turn into gold foul foots. Turning silver into gold is alchemy. Now, stones, seeds, stones, and stones again to level up the hammer. Then down to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. I'm just bashing everyone on the way down instead of chancing a shot in the back. The Crystallion is weak to strike damage, and that's what our hammer does, so the biggest danger ends up being greed. That's not too dangerous though, it's smashed up pretty easily. Now up to the ruin screen precipice, look at this mighty crit against a vulgar militia member. No hiding. Oh my god! And then get all the smithing stone 4s and smithing stone 5s we need to level the hammer up to plus 13, if we had enough runes. For some reason, big brick hammer costs more to upgrade than most weapons, so I take a field trip that I was always going to do anyway to the Weeping Peninsula. You can get a golden seed and two sacred tears there in less than 5 minutes, it's very worth it. I figured I'd fight the Erdtree Avatar for the runes I needed to upgrade to plus 13, but there was a Knight's Cavalry on the way there, so I just squished that. Then I remembered I still needed runes to buy Quick Step, so I killed the Erdtree avatar anyway. It gives us some nice Physic tiers. The Bubble tier gives you a free hit. The HP regen tier isn't that great, but it's better than nothing. Volstag from the Warriors 3, everyone clap, sells us the Quick Step Ash of War, which hilariously we can put on our massive hammer. The Delicate Finesse step is absolutely compatible with the Great Hammer. Why wouldn't it be? Poop cave time! Scoot across the poopy and get to the Clean Rot Knights. At plus 13, our hammer is a mean, lean, knife-crushing machine, so we can get the stance break really fast and critically hit the first one shortly after the second one stands up. One-on-one, -on -one, they're no match for the might of Thor. We bring that hammer down and get the golden scarab to boost our experience gains by 20%. You seen Hemsworth lately? We need the gains. So now we're good to finish off the Ruin Strewn Precipice and the Magma Worm at the top. It's not hard, we break its stance a lot. Heavy weapons do that, heavy attacks do that, and Makar here is so slow we can get plenty of fully charged heavy attacks. We touch Grace and then ride around Altus for a while. Loki tries to ambush us, but the horse we got from the other Loki is too fast for this Loki. Just outside the outer gates is a scarab that gives us the lightning slash ash of war. Despite being called slash, it can also be a lightning smash. Check it out against this earth tree avatar. We charge the hammer with lightning, bring it down hard and follow up with a lightning strike pretty rad. The extra lightning damage also lingers on the hammer for a bit, so we officially have a lightning hammer. This particular Erdtree avatar drops tiers that boost magic, holy, or my favorite for this run, lightning damage. So now we're ready to take on some shard bearers. Stormvale Castle is no match for Thor, master of storms. We storm the main gate. Who cares about ballistas? Mortal weapons cannot stop a god. Before fighting Godric, I find a lady who wants to help us, Jane Foster. She just shredded this dude up and is pretty shredded herself. 
beautiful. Look at those arms. It's like she's our other half, but she's even cooler. Okay, deep breath, calm down. We summon her to handle Doc Octric and his tainted winds. It's a great first date. The atmosphere, the chemistry, the body horror, the regicide. Between the two of us, there's nothing Dr. Octopus could do, even with all his extra arms. God, I wish I could bring Jane with us on all our adventures, but I'm guessing we're gonna have to make sure she knows we'd be a solid partner first. Now, the first step to any erotic conquest is to D, demonstrate your value. Jane, please date me. I have a cat. She wanted to say hi when I was in Caleb, but then she left. Understandable, there's a lot of dogs there. Thanos is throwing a party and the whole MCU is there. Korg, Hercules, Blade, Deadpool, Iron Man, a uh, healer girl. The Avengers don't have a healer, but they really should, especially fighting Thanos. Maybe Helen Cho, but she doesn't really get on the field a lot. Whatever. Thanos time. We are not even level 40 yet. Being unable to take out the Grey Old Dragon is still hurting us. And so is Thanos. He hits really, really hard. The first time I died to a combo. The second time, he didn't need one. He just snapped me out of existence in one hit. So how can I win? Two-step strategy. Don't get hit. Go for the head. Look at my sick rolls. I bob and I weave like Spider-Man and then smash him like only an Asgardian can. Technically, that crit isn't what killed him, but pretend it was, okay? Thanos gives us over 100,000 runes, which is huge at this point. Back at Avengers HQ, we buy Thanos' armor, but not the arm pieces. Sun's out, gun's out. Now that we're all dressed up, I'll chat up Jane and find out her dad is, oh, Sir Gideon Offnir? The all-knowing? That dude sucks. Oh, hopefully we do holidays in Asgard. Altus Aaron's time. Gilka gets smashed by a crit that actually does get the kill. Pretty satisfying. And I scoop up the Ritual Sword Talisman. 10% damage boost at full health. Always good. While Gilka can't kill me as a boss, some little gargoyles in the Windham Catacombs can with lightning. God, that's embarrassing. We're here for another Talisman, but the Lindell Knight is back for another round. We're currently 3-1 against him, so I'm kind of scared. But I managed to squeak it out, and now we're 3-2. Still a losing record. The talisman in question is the Lightning Scorpion Charm, which boosts lightning damage by 12%, but decreases our damage resistance. I'm only going to equip it if I really need that damage boost. Spoilers, I don't equip it. This was a waste of time. A much more useful way to spend our time is heading to Carrier Manor, where we can start Frigga's questline to help us with Jane. Girls love a guy who treats their mom well, after all. Ghost Loretta is blocking the exit, but she's pretty weak to lightning. Ghosts are weak to lightning in Elden Ring, someone called Game Freak. They need to update their matchups. We go to the top of Frigga's tower, she says she has friends over, and we we have to stop gaming to say hi. Oh, mom, I don't even care. They don't know me. They fine, whatever. EG's a giant. Selvis is a very nice man who helps people go on adventures together. I think. I kind of mashed through his dialogue. I'm sure that's what he said. Fun fact, did you know that you can mount your horse at the top of Ronnie's tower? Other fun fact, did you know that mounting your horse pushes you forward? Third and final fun fact, summoning a horse at the top of Ronnie's tower makes you run off to your death. I learned that lesson twice. Then I head over to Selvis. He gives us a potion that will let Jane come on adventures with us and be buddies. I'm pretty sure. Again, I mashed through his dialogue. I think that's what he said. Jane is hanging out in the village of the Albernarix. Apparently some jerk sent a bunch of people here to murder the innocent civilians and steal a key to the Halleck tree. I hope we can help her kill that dude later. She loves social justice. Folks, get yourself a partner who's committed to social justice. An old man hiding in a pot gives us half the key to the Halleck tree with no muss or fuss. I don't even think the murder was necessary. They should have just asked. Now, I bet Jane would love it if we murdered one of the murderers, like the Omen Killer. He bears a striking resemblance to the Capra Demon from Dark Souls. Two serrated swords, a fancy mask, flame breath, and none of that is what makes him hard. It's his god dang gank dogs. I just had no time to breathe, and I died. Then I found out you can summon Nefeli for the fight, which not only alleviates the gank, but is also another fun date. Like every fun date, it starts by beating up dogs with a hammer. Maybe it'll end with small fires and bedwetting. Together, Capra Demon HD Remix can't handle us. It's just even more proof that we're destined to be together. Heading back to the round table hold, Gideon has sent Ghost Rider to kill me. Apparently, he was the one who sent the Omen Killer to murder the Alban Eriks and is now trying to kill me for the medallion. Easy win, though. Jane seems pretty bummed out, so I'll ask Gideon what's up. He says he disowned her because she wasn't cool with his village murder. Pro tip, if your dad does a horrible thing and gets mad at you for being upset about them doing the horrible thing, they're a terrible dad. Not that I would know that's not a personal story. I just remembered, though. I have a potion that lets anyone come on an adventure with us. And that should cheer her up. I mashed through the dialogue, but I'm pretty sure the basic gist is, Jane, do you want to drink this potion and come on adventures with me, punishing the oppressors? And then she says, yeah, that sounds cool. I'm on board 
board with us and give my enthusiastic support for this plan. Hell yeah. Let's get some flowers to celebrate. Down in Nokron, we can get some Nokronic. That's the ghost glove wart you use to upgrade the cool spirit ashes. To go deeper, we have to fight Mystique. But she copies us without our clothes or weapons, so she can't actually hurt us. Kind of like if Mystique actually fought Thor. For poops and grins, I fought the Mimic tier without putting my armor back on. It's not a Thor movie if you don't get a scene of Thor in his birthday suit. I talked to Selvis, make sure Jane's doing all right. He says, yeah, she's really happy and doing one hand to push ups in the back to bulk up before you fight bad guys together. I'm sure that's what he said. I mastered the text. I'm trying to do these runs fast. After we grab the Finger Slayer blade and give it to Frigga though, Selvis is gone. I go to look for him and some weird guy's being attacked by puppets in a castle. Weird, but Jane's there, so now we can leave. Significant others can be expensive though, so we need to get some runes. I talk to Odin, he's a dog in this game, and learn the Lightning Spear spell for farming later. Then I go and body Dragon Smarag really fast, but I pickled too late. All my runes are gone. I'm broke! I'm a dead man! Well, no, but I didn't get as many as I could have. The dragon was guarding a key to the castle where my sister is staying. Hella this time, not Loki. Thor's family is complicated, what with the other dimensions and stuff. We make our way through the Raya Lucaria Academy and come face to face with Fenris. Not to be confused with Sif from Dark Souls or Sif from the Thor movies. Who should Sif be? Do I just forget about Sif? What am I, the MCU? Beating Fenris lets us grab the Radigan icon upstairs, which helps us cast spells faster. We're gonna need that eventually when we can cast spells. We can't cast any right now. Captain America stops by to do some sparring. For all you nerds who wonder what would happen if Thor's hammer hit Captain America's shield, here's your answer. Thor gets parried and stabbed. Still, he's just a dude and we're the god of thunder, so we cap the cap. I opened the shortcut, but didn't go back to the grace. Even though I'm low on HP and flasks, I figure this is the best way to take on Hela, the goddess of death. How hard could that be? Technically in this game, Hela is Frigga's mother, but don't think about that. Just watch me smash these kids with a hammer. They're bad kids. They, uh, they disrupt movies in the movie theater. Phase two is more intense. Hela has hella magic, including Comet Azure, Moonbeam, Crystal Blast, and she can summon Spirit Ashes. Everyone knows summoning Spirit Ashes is the weakest way to play Elden Ring. Only a noob would do that. But she has Dragon Spirit Ashes. God, I hope they add that in the DLC. After some patient dodging of all of her ashes, we get the win. We don't even have to kill her. Later, we can come back and chat if we want to respec. It's nice to be close to your family. Brief mention of a new farming technique. I always kill the birds west of the first step, Sight of Grace, get their feet, and to turn them into pickles. But if you just keep going down down the beach to the north, there's like three times as many birds, so you can use a silver fowl foot to boost your item discovery, then kill a ton of birds and get a whole bunch more farming done faster. It's pretty nice. Now that we have pickles, we can grind a bit more. Time for the Grail Putrid Avatar. While its damage is scaled for endgame, its moves are still the standard Groody 2Ds. Butt slams with poison, how novel. I still died twice though, remember that endgame damage? The reason we're doing this is for endgame runes, well over 100,000 and a couple decent physic tiers as well. Flipping the carrion study hall, upside down lets us go to the top of the divine tower of learning to grab the cursed mark of death we're not going to give it to frigga even though she wants it we're going to give it to someone else but grabbing that will let us warp to noxtella where we can grab the last flowers we need for jane the ghost glove warp bell too will let us buy some from the merchants in the avengers hq then i head further up the stairs having to bonk a ball that doesn't get out of my way just because the elevator back down will give us another golden seat while i'm up here i also bash some mimics who would snipe us while we're trying to grab the flowers in the channel below it's on the way, might as well. I don't know why the Rot Dragon is always my rune farm of choice for upgrading Spirit Ashes, but hey, here we are. Exicus, I said it slowly and I think that's right, probably not, it's dead anyway. I'll just call it the Rot Dragon. Then we can finally max out Jane just in time to fight a boss we can't summon her for. Godfroy the Grafted lies in an Everjail in Altus. Everjail is spelled like it's trying to avoid a copyright strike from jails, and Godfroy is doing the same to avoid a copyright strike from Godric. If it seems like it's the same fight we did earlier, yeah. It is. The only difference is there's no phase two and no summoning. This is another reason that I think summoning NPCs and spirit ashes is an intended piece of this game. There are boss fights where the specific challenge is doing it without spirit ashes. He gives up the Godfrey icon, which boosts the damage of charged spells, something we're gonna need later. Something else we're gonna need later is a hug from Lady Death. Not to be confused with our sister, Hela, goddess of death. This is the human personification of death. And it's not cheating on Jane, it's just a hug. Always hug your homies. They might lower your total HP, but they'll also open up a secret underground area you need later. And they appreciate the contact. Physical touch can be a platonic love language. Why would Thor get his arms so big if they weren't for massive hugs? That's the end of the first stream and the end of our time as a single god. From now on, it's time for love and love.
Getting back into it with the second stream, the first thing I do is hop into the Spider-Verse, Celia Crystal Tunnel. I'm here to grab Smithing Stone 5s, but that's not interesting. So let's talk about the Spider-Man I squish instead. Peter Parker, pulverized. Ben Riley, bashed. Gwen, dropped like a love interest down a clock tower. Miles Morales, butchered harder than his Thor What If run. Penny, pinched. Eddie, deady, and Superior Spider-Man proven inferior. God, there's a lot of spider people. It's true, the market is becoming saturated. At the end of the tunnel is a falling star beast, widely considered to be one of the hardest field bosses. And I mean that literally. Its hard body makes it resist status effects, so if you want to beat it, you just have to hit it. And that's good for us. This build doesn't use status effects, it just hits things with a hammer really hard. And killing it with a big meaty crit is pretty satisfying. I had so much fun doing it, I thought, wouldn't it be more fun to do it with my girlfriend? Killing the falling star beast, I mean. So I head over to Altus and fight another one. Since it's in an open field, it uses more of its spiky attacks that it didn't really use in the cave for some reason. Killing it with a big meaty crit, though, is just as satisfying the second time. Now I've got a taste for Falling Star Beast Blood, but on the way there, there's a third Charon and a second Magma Worm. It's not really that different. I guess Charon just has a skeleton with a Death Star laser now, and the Magma Worm is near a lava pit that I don't have to stand in. Unless I want to say hi to Korg. Hey Korg, hope you're doing well, buddy. Don't fight me to the death later, please. Further up, Mount Gelmnir, I trick a bear into breaking the statue for some more smithing stones and then ignore it to make my way to some ladders. So many ladders? What a thrill. Since I'm just a couple smithing stone fives away from upgrading the hammer, I dip into the Altus tunnel and grab the few that I need. Since I'm here already and could use the runes, I fight the Crystallian duo, but uh-oh, I don't have enough magic to summon Jane. Luckily for me, a recent patch made the duo less aggressive when you fight them 1v2, but honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. It's much easier Easier, but it feels kind of weird when one just stands there menacingly. I win. I level up the hammer and jump straight up a spirit spring to fight the fully grown falling star beast. It's the same size, but has a phase two with a death star laser. You need a phase two, give it a death star laser. I'm smart enough to summon Nefeli this time, couldn't do the fight without her. I'm proven right, she gets knocked off the mountain like King bob and I die fighting the beast alone. I die one more time, the geometry here makes it a little trickier. It's a big hole going down, as opposed to the flat land you fight the other two on. So sometimes my crits whiff, sometimes I accidentally jump over it instead of hitting it with a jump attack. Still, I'm able to clear it out, which gives us enough smithing stones to upgrade the plus 18. Now, let's go body the Draconic Tree Sentinel. It's guarding the entrance to Asgard. Loki took over and doesn't want us coming in. The evil Loki, the good Loki, wants us to get in there. We're a high level for this point, and our weapon is plus 5 higher than it usually is, so it's actually pretty easy to smash up the Tree Sentinel. Into Asgard, I jump across some rooftops to find another evil root to fight. This one drops a Lord's Rune, which is 50,000 runes with extra steps. Fight them in your room. It's easy and worth it. Since I'm being chased by a Lindell soldier, I can't rest at the grace and just go scoop up the Ritual Shield Talisman, which boosts our defenses up when we're at full HP. Nearby, there's some more Lindell soldiers that I have to beat to settle the score. I died, and now we're at 4 and 2, but then I beat them and we're tied up at 4 and 4. Since, you know, there's two, that's how it works. One of them drops a Gravel Stone Seal, which will eventually boost our lightning spells by 15%. Loki is being guarded by a Visage of the Hulk. It's one of the very few bosses weak to lightning damage, so it's hardly a speed bump. So is Black Widow. Hey Nat, what are you doing? I think you're great, but you can't be Thor. You're just like good at fighting. Now we can fight Loki at full power with the help of Loki and Thor. It's a Loki v Thor, Thor, and Loki situation. Classic multiverse story. Bad Loki is way faster than he was before, with more conjured weapons, including a conjured hammer that's longer than mine. Good thing Thor isn't insecure. He can also impale you with his blood blade if you're bad at dodging. Whoops, but it's pretty easy to bash him down. Apparently Morgoth was gatekeeping Yggdrasil, which was being gatekeeped again by a multiverse evil Thor. What is it with Morgoth and blocking doors that are already being guarded by a second person? It's just weird that it happens twice. Good Loki knows that the only way to win is by burning down Yggdrasil, which I'm sure will be fine. No big consequences for that. To do that, we need to go up north. Deep north. Meet me in the hallway. 
Up in the mountaintop of the Giants, it's a lot of riding, but the trip is broken up if you fight Borealis, the freezing fog. He's a big dragon, I need nothing from him but the runes, but we do need runes. So I get really close to killing it. One hit left, and then I remember I'm not the god of hammers, I'm the god of thunder. I win by throwing a lightning bolt at the dragon's face. It's immensely satisfying. For something we really need, we have to do some viking. Can't go to Norway without Viking. In Elden Ring, that means going to the Everjail and duking it out with Vike. It's an NPC boss, not something I'm great at. His spear is long and his stance doesn't really get broken like a normal boss. Kind of the best thing about this build. It takes a couple of tries, but eventually we get there and are rewarded with Vike's Dragon Bolt, an incantation that adds lightning damage to our weapon and lowers our equipment load. That's not going to be enough to push us into light load, but it will at least make our stamina come back slightly faster. We can't use that buff with the lightning bolt ash of war so i need another ash of war inside a giant skull is an ancient dragon smithing stone we can use later to max out our hammer and on the top of that skull is the ash of war trolls roar it's just a big shout that does a lot of damage there isn't really thunder damage in this game so i'm counting a big shout as our shockwave it's also really good so i could be stretching a little bit to justify using it before we fight surter i want to upgrade the flasks one more time and i end up getting attacked by darth Town. Alan? Disney, you could do this. You have the rights. That should be in Kingdom Hearts 4. If you like Kingdom Hearts, we're doing that next, by the way. Darth Talon gives us a Physic tier that will matter more later. Surter time. Thor didn't fight him in Ragnarok, but I'm feeling mighty. We've got double the Thor. That's double the fun. The first try goes rough, though. I think I'm getting worse at this fight. I don't know what it is. I get bonked. I get bonked off the horse. I get bonked again before phase two even starts. I've only got three flasks left, so I have to do this perfectly. Like, hypothetically, I would need a stance break. Maybe two. And to dodge everything flawlessly. Oh, I did that. Neat. First try victory. Loki sets herself on fire and we go to Faramazula, which prompts this great question. Now I have to go beat Malaketh from... Oh, who do I call Malaketh in Thor lore? The villain of Thor 2 is Malaketh. They have the same weird, obscure fantasy name and I forgot. I blame Thor 2 more than myself. I grab the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book. It's full of way better lightning spells that are going to carry us through the endgame. Grab the Grace Outside the Godskin Duo. I guess they're next. Unless, uh, I did anything else. Let's start by seeing our dog dead. Hey Odin, how you doing? Can you teach me a giant lightning spell? Thank you. Nearby, we can ride down to the Einzel River where Hank Pym has gone bananas. There's so many big ants that I'm not fighting. They're really not worth the time. I think this area is meant to be explored around when you explore Lernia since the elevator is in Lernia. Hank is giant and draconic looking, like some sort of dragonkin soldier of Noxtella. Since this is a Lernia scale boss, he doesn't even have time to enter phase too. I beat him to death too fast. Poor guy. He drops the frozen lightning spear, which is blue, like Thor's lightning in the movies. It also causes frostbite, which is not really something I want, but the shape of it's good, the speed of it is good, and the damage is good. It's just a nice spell that's also an ice spell. Another underground area is the Saoirse Ronan Aqueduct, where we can fight the Valiant Gargoyles. A ganky gargoyle fight in a FromSoft game? Wonder where they got that idea. I deliberately delayed coming down here as long as possible because these two are almost as annoying as the godskins. Their saving grace, though, is that they have way less health. Into the deep root depths, we ride a coffin. I guess that's one way to transition an area. Okay. Then we fight the Champions of Lady Death, which are NPCs using gear from players who have hugged Lady Death. Shoutouts to Jack Packard for pointing that out, that's at Harlack on Twitter, he's the best. One of them is Fandral from The Warriors 3, Please Clap, then Iron Man from the Thanos fight, and two other NPCs. One of them had sleep pots, I've never been slept before, that's so exciting. This is an easy boss fight, Iron Man has an instant death that kills Jane, but yeah, it's still pretty easy. Hugging Death again, she wants to have a baby with God. Godwin's corpse. That big melty body in the back? That's Godwin's corpse. Uh, good luck! Naturally, that makes her pretty sleepy, so we pop into her brain and fight a dragon that's haunting her dreams, Lich Dragon Fortisax. But just because he has sacks in the name doesn't mean he's here to play Baker Street. He's here to throw lightning. And since he throws lightning, he resists lightning. That's the damage we do. So, how can we win? Well, we're gonna use lightning anyway. The Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike 
is such a massive area that if you cast it underneath the big dragon, it translates to big damage, even though the dragon resists lightning. Unfortunately, our dexterity is really low, which means we have a slow casting time, which means we die. Fortis Axe has this fun thing where standing underneath him automatically hits you with lightning every now and again. It hits us faster than we can cast the spell. So I pop on Radigan's icon to cast spells faster, and then the Godfrey icon to boost the damage of charged spells to really make them worth it. That gets us very, very, very close, and then less close the third time. Good news though, Hella is still alive, and we can respec with we don't need the hammer, so I trade in all of our strength stats for extra dexterity to cast faster and mind to cast more spells. Even then, it's a little tricky. It's just the auto lightning. Fortisac's actual attacks aren't that bad to dodge. It's just getting stunned by that freaking auto lightning and then comboed into one of his bigger hits. After I get close again, I just use the fast version of the spell to finish him off and am rewarded with another big lightning spell that I don't end up using. The lightning strike does the same thing, but better. I respect back with Hella, and then it's time for the Godskin duo. Or I could go fight an Earth Tree Avatar for some extra runes in Norway. This one can clone itself. Its clone also takes damage, so it doesn't take any longer to beat it, and it doesn't hurt us anymore. The Death Rite Bird, though, I skip. Even I have limits. As I make my way into Castle Soul, there's a couple of big lions outside, but I can summon Jane to double team one with me. Unless she just runs off to aggro the other one. Oh, she wants to fight Bear. I respect that. The rest of the castle is a solo journey. Or should I say, a soul journey. I shouldn't. There's ballistas again, but they're good at aiming this time. Then there's some wolves I can kill with one lightning strike, and a bird that takes three for some reason. Flying type is weak to electric. Learn your Pokemon matchups from soft. It's easier to move forward just squishing the soldiers so they don't chase you. Then I can open up a shortcut before the boss. Commander Nial summons some spirit ashes, but I don't think he's dating his like we are. Maybe he is, actually. I don't know that he's not. A little thruple? Good for him. I kill his boyfriends, and then he goes Super Saiyan. It's actually a really cool mechanic, Nial's phases scale when you kill his soldiers, so you could fight an easier Nial with a bit more of a gank, or take them down. Personally, I hate a gank, and would rather go 2v1 against a harder boss with Jane. I even end things off with a mighty critical hit. God, that's fun. That gives us another piece of the Halig Tree Medallion, so we can head to the Consecrated Snowfield. It's very snowy and hard to see. I got lost for a full five minutes before finding the map. I'm heading to the Minor Urge Tree to fight another 2v Groody, but I don't find him before Nefeli disappears. Whoops, I guess I gotta do this solo. I wonder how much Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike would do to the- Oh my god! Oh, it's dead. We did this for rings. That's also why I kill another Magma Worm. The bosses in this area drop a ton of runes. It's worth the trip if you really need a lot of levels to feel like Thor. But the most runes come from the secret bosses, so we need to find a way to Mongwen Palace. There are like no graces that I can find on my way to fight a sanguine noble. He has the same weapons as Nerd Juice from earlier, and really, I don't know that it's that different of a fight. After he dies, I can blue skidoo into Bloodville. It's nasty. I scoot around the Blood Swamp, then have to go through a Dark Blood Cave. It might be better to get a lantern, but that would take too long. I just cowabunga through and make it out alive before being murdered. I'm here to fight Mogius, Lord of Blood, a guy who looks like Satan wields a pitchfork, has blood that's on fire, and kid kidnapped his brother to marry him to start a dynasty. This guy's evil as shit. Let's squish him. Turns out, though, all that evil makes him pretty strong. He's one of two totally optional face-smashing bosses that are pretty much just in the game for the kids who thought Souls games got too easy. The other is Melania, and we're not doing that. Maybe. Maybe we'll do that eventually. Phase two, he stabs the sky, which normally makes you bleed three times, so you'll have to heal three times to not die. Or use that Physic tier we got from killing Darth Talon earlier. He still heals about a third of his HP from doing the sky stab though, and yeah, can't deal stance damage while he's doing it. It really sucks. But remember that big lightning attack I have that melts bosses? That's gotta deal some great damage the next time I get a stance break. I'm gonna try it. It doesn't do much, dang. Okay, so all told, I died five times. Not before winning, before giving up. I see it in your eyes.
After Mogius, I'm sure the Godskin duo will seem easy. I died immediately, but we summoned Volstag from the Warriors 3. Clap! With a little more strategy, things go well. Ice Lightning has a nice little area that can sometimes hit both the big boy and the thin boy, while also stacking up some Frostbite. Troll's Roar also is great since it deals stance damage to stun them and smash them with big, satisfying critical hits. Second try victory. That gives us our last Smithing Stone Bell Bearing to max out the hammer and get the casting seal up to plus 24. It's so close. Another quick spell that will help is the Golden Vow spell. It's in Mount Gelmnir. I have to beat an old lady with a stick to get it. Is that implying I had the stick or she did? Who knows? Golden Vow boosts the damage you do and reduces the damage you take for yourself and nearby allies. It's really good. We need another Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone for the seal, and my favorite one comes from beating up Garak. He's that dude who gave us our first seal earlier, and he's not hostile until you attack him a few times. So I'm able to butter him up for a critical early and then keep smashing him with Jane. I accidentally forgot to grab the Smithing Stone at first, but I went back and get it done. Maxed out seal. In for Amazula, I beat these Beast Boys to death to land the Swag Jump without hindrance, then grab the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman for more physical resistance, and I die because I forgot I had my seal up and didn't block when I hit the block button. I tried to cast a spell. Whoops. I battled some more beasts to open up a chest and grab the Old Lord's Talisman. That makes buffing spells last longer, like Golden Vow and Vike's Dragon Bolt. So now we've got to be ready for Mogius. Unless I forgot to switch that Physic tier back on, then I'd have to jump to my death to reset faster. Then we go in with the Golden Vow, maxed out hammer, more physical resistance. We're going to do it. I died three more times before I realized something pretty profound. It's like, you know what it is? I, I feel like I'm fighting a Splatoon character. <laughs> Phase 2 is just running around trying not to step in Mogius' blood puddles while he makes more blood puddles and you can't make your own blood puddles. There are items I guess that make puddles but they're bad and they're not Thor so I can't make puddles. I'm just stuck in Mogius' puddle parade and then I die two more times for a total of 10 deaths against Mo. It's important to remember though, even at your lowest moment you still have value. We can do this, just maybe a little bit later. I decided to make Mogius the last boss before I fight the final boss. He'll be the penultimate peril. So I walk back to Malakath's arena and fight the Draconic 3 Sentinel. It goes really smoothly. This is the exact kind of confidence boost I need. But then I warp back to the Grace too fast, so the game didn't count him as dead. I had to fight him again, even though I won. That sucks. Garonk time again. Didn't we kill this guy already? He gets his revenge by pushing us off a cliff early the first time. It's a silly death, but it's still a death. I'm counting it. I'm trying to save the stance break for phase two, and the second time I fight him, I'm sure I've got him right on the edge. After he goes full the dark world, I roar and no stance break. Then I dodge a few attacks, roar again, still no stance break. Weird. And I ended up dying. Next time though, we get the stance break. We get the critical hit. We whip an attack. God, I wish this hammer was longer, but fine. Finally, we get the win, and a bunch of runes. Now we can fight the most satisfying boss, the main villain for us and the mighty Thor. Gideon fudging off near the all fudging knowing. He killed a village. He disowned his own daughter. He sent someone to murder us. Gideon deserves the full might of two Thors crashing down on him, and it's already over. Alrighty, that was anticlimactic. Who's next? Thunderbolt Ross? Okay. I'm joking. Red Hulk is a boss of all bosses. He's fast and strong and balanced to wreck your shit while being manageable enough to beat. Phase 2, the Gamma takes over and this old man becomes a hulking monster of smashing power. He's able to kill me twice, but I land a crit and I eat my pickle. The next boss is- Oh god, he's not dead! Oh, he's not dead! Hit him again, hit him again! Okay, bunch of runes. Leveling up now. Now it's Mogan time. With everything we've accomplished, I still can't beat Moog. 11 deaths, more deaths to this boss than any boss in the rest of the series, and it's totally optional. I spent 45 minutes of this run just bashing my face into the Lord of Blood, get more runes, make the final boss easier. Thankfully, I beat it on my second try here, which is actually the 12th try, but God, we did it and got 650,000 runes, which is roughly six levels of this point. And it only helps with Radagon and the Elder Beast, two bosses that honestly aren't really that bad for this build. Still, I'll activate Godric's Grave Room and beat this giant to death on the way because he dodged my drive-by hammering. 
Godric's great rune gives us plus five to every stat, which helps our HP, our magic, the damage from our magic, our endurance, our hammer damage, and our holy resistance. All of those are gonna help with Evil Thor. Evil Thor uses radiant damage instead of lightning. It's a silly move. Me and Mighty Thor start hammering, but he gets me in a healing loop. That's when a boss hits you, you heal, they hit you while you heal, and then you have to heal again. It's a great way to run out of flasks, especially when the boss has multiple phases, especially when that second phase is mostly just an endurance challenge. Still, I'm able to get a mighty crit and beat Radagon down with a few flasks left, and Jane's at a decent amount of HP. I even have enough time to reapply the Golden Vow on the two of us. Now that we've set our Golden Vows, we're ready to plow. My strategy against the Elden Beast is to use the roar to break its stance, then beat it to death with mighty crits. At least, that's what I thought, until I crit. Then I remembered my real strategy. That's breaking its stance and using the ancient dragon lightning strike, that massive AoE that destroys big bosses quickly. It was the best tool against Fortis Hacks, a boss that resists lightning damage. So it's gonna shred the Elden Beast. I know, because I did a practice run of this, and it shredded the Elden Beast. Before we can break its stance again, it summons the Elden Stars, an annoying blurb of holy that just follows you around. I found it's best to just get as far away from it as possible and keep running until it's done. If you stay in the same area, it's gonna hit you more. I say more because it, it's gonna hit you no matter what you do, at least a little bit. Then it happens. Another stance break. Time for the massive AoE of lightning that I didn't equip. Oh god dang it. Okay, I have plenty of rune arcs, so I'll get the crit and never mind. I won. It took 9 hours and 24 minutes. Over an hour longer than our longest run so far. Obviously that means this is the worst one, right? Not really. I decide the tiers based on how many bosses they kill, how many deaths they die, and how long it takes them to do both of those on average. So even though it was long, we still killed 47 bosses and died 43 times. That's a positive KD ratio with a great average on both times, even with Mogius heavily skewing the results. So I'll put it at bottom of S tier. The big hammer is fun. Heavy weapons break stance, which makes the game easy. The armor is decent enough to take a few hits and trade damage if you want, and lightning is a pretty good damage type. It's rarely the best damage type, but it's also very rarely the worst. And the spells are pretty cool, and they have a big area. Really, I'd just say get a longer heavy weapon, maybe a longer weapon that doesn't require as much strength so you can invest more in faith and don't have to level up quite as much. Although leveling up with this build is fun, you just get to play the game more. If you want to watch me do these runs live, follow me on Twitch. It's a pretty fun time and I'd love to have you. And if you like Dungeons & Dragons, check out my other channel. I do more character builds over there.